like to thank the NFL Foundation for the generosity in making this course possible. Hello, my name is Kim Ruwako, and I am the Vice President of Suicide Prevention and Postvention at the Tragedy Assistance Program for Survivors, or TAPS. For over 25 years, TAPS has supported military families grieving the death of a loved one who served, no matter the cause of death or the relationship to the deceased. In this course, I would like to talk about the TAPS Postvention Model of Support, which is a field-leading, best-practice approach to postvention care for survivors of suicide loss. One application of the model has involved advising military leaders following the suicide loss of service members on active duty military bases. Suicide loss has many complicating factors that can hamper the healing process, increase risk, and interfere with readiness for duty. A proactive, comprehensive postvention plan and response can not only stabilize a unit, but it can help rebuild a culture that better supports suicide prevention, mental health, and wellness. At the end of this course, you should be able to, one, understand what safe messaging is and why it is critical following a suicide in a military unit, two, describe potential negative impacts of failing to use best practice postvention strategies, and three, understand that supporting those impacted by suicide can not only help them heal, but can actually help them grow. Research tells us that people who are exposed to suicide are at increased risk not only for dying by suicide themselves, but also for suffering from mental health disorders, addiction, and reclusiveness. Army STARS research suggests that every completed suicide in a unit heightens risk of attempts by other members of the same unit. Soldiers were more likely to attempt suicide if someone's suicide attempt occurred in their unit during the past year, with odds increasing as the number of unit attempts increased. The researchers concluded that units with a history of suicide attempts may be important targets for preventative interventions. So how do we approach unit stabilization? At TAPS, our approach is grounded in the philosophy of leading suicidologist and TAPS associate, Dr. Frank Campbell, a pioneer in the field of postvention. Dr. Campbell's work is governed by the idea that postvention is prevention and should be done proactively. Based on this, TAPS has developed a three-phase suicide postvention model of support that offers a range of immediate services that will help stabilize military units after a suicide loss and build a solid foundation for the way forward. The TAPS model helps service members navigate complicated emotions associated with suicide, provides a strategy for healthy grieving, and helps service members make meaning of the pain of suicide loss, a concept called post-traumatic growth. Phase one of TAPS postvention model is stabilization. Safe messaging is a critical component of this phase. Safe messaging means all of your unit's official and unofficial messages about suicide are strategic and make use of relevant guidelines and best practices in order to reduce risk. The National Action Alliance produced a guide that explains best practices of safe messaging that you might want to utilize when communicating with your unit about suicide. The Suicide Prevention Resource Center and the Department of Veterans Affairs also have tips on safe messaging you could incorporate into your unit's communication strategy. Following a suicide in a unit, how we talk about suicide can increase or decrease risk in others. It is important to talk about suicide as an event that is influenced by multiple factors and something that happens when a person is in a lot of pain and can't think of another way to end their pain or cope. It is helpful to understand that most people who die by suicide are not thinking clearly. Sadly, they may even think that they are a burden to their loved ones and that everyone would be better off without them. When talking about a suicide, expressing regret that anyone would feel so helpless and hopeless is an important message. It is also important to emphasize that every person in the unit is a valuable part of the mission and that each loss is devastating. 
Helping service members understand that they can support somebody struggling with mental pain in the same way that they would support somebody struggling with a physical injury or illness is an important part of shifting the culture. It is also critical to highlight that there are many different kinds of resources available to anyone who is struggling, and many are confidential. People can seek help both on and off base in many different ways, such as group or individual therapy, peer support, or spiritual guidance. In addition, it is important to pay attention to the language you use when you talk about suicide. Avoid saying committed, gesture, failed attempt, or successful suicide. A crime is committed, a sin is committed. People who die by suicide are most likely sick, not bad. We also never want anybody to associate the ideas of success or failure with suicide. It is more helpful to say died by suicide, took their own life, suicided, or attempted suicide. Let's talk through the three-phase model and how it sets a healthy foundation for the way forward. Here is how you might implement this model in your unit. Following a suicide, a day should be put aside with the expectation that everyone attends this event. Begin the day with an opening brief led by somebody in leadership position who is respected, such as the commander. The purpose of this brief is to offer understanding, hope, and help. It should be organized in the following way. First, educate about suicide. A better understanding of why people die by suicide decreases gossip, misinformation, and self-blame to those who are closely associated with the deceased. It also helps mitigate regrets in those who may have noticed something but feel they didn't do enough. It highlights lessons learned on the look back but reinforces suicide is complicated and not the result of just one thing, like a relationship breakup, a failure, or a transition. Next, it is important to normalize mental health issues. Compare mental health with physical health. For example, you could say, what does our training tell us about treating a physical injury? It tells us that first you use your skills to try to treat yourself. If that doesn't work, ask a peer for help. If that doesn't help, then you bring in a professional. The idea is to get treatment, rehabilitate, and return to duty if possible. Mental health is the same. Illness, injury, and struggles are part of the human experience, and we should all expect to face this at some point in our lives. There is help, there is treatment, and treatment works. Expressing regret that you have lost one of your own is vital. Emphasize that each person is valuable. Ask everyone to take responsibility for their own mental and physical health, to care enough about each other to share when they are struggling and ask others about their well-being if they see somebody that they are concerned about. Next, talk about the impact of suicide. Suicide leaves behind a wake of emotions that may be difficult to navigate. Let the unit members know that whatever they're feeling is okay and you support them in feeling and talking about whatever emotions they are experiencing. Anger, guilt, sadness, shame, frustration, and fear are all common emotions experienced by those exposed to suicide. Remind the unit that this event may trigger personal experiences with suicide loss or thoughts they may have had in the past. If that is the case, let them know that they are supported and probably not alone in those thoughts. It is also important to talk about resources and the way forward. Familiarize yourself with the available resources so you can share them during the brief and commit to making sure your troops have the support of the command to use those resources. Specifically, make sure people are given time to get the assistance if they need it. Make small group process and individual sessions available as long as needed. Finally, end the opening session with a story of hope. Including a story of hope or resilience can provide a roadmap for help seeking and reassurance that it is possible to get help and succeed. This can be a personal story from the commander or a story the commander knows. You could also arrange to have another service member come speak. Make sure that your unit knows that by banding together, you will get through this tremendously difficult time.
During your post-mansion stand-down, after your opening session, break the unit into small groups. The group should be led by a chaplain, behavioral health professional, or someone else trained in group process. Smaller groups can help identify and stabilize any suicide-specific issues which may interfere with the way forward or adjustment back to work. It can help identify those at risk who may need one-on-one -on -one assessment and care. It offers a safe place to talk about thoughts and emotions associated with this loss. The small group facilitator should start the group by explaining rules about confidentiality and sharing, and should promote peer-to-peer -peer support. If possible, try to have fewer than 15 people in each group. Some sample questions the facilitator of the group may ask are, who has strong feelings about this event and would like to start? Or, how has this event affected you? Or, what kinds of questions and concerns would you like to bring up to the group? Or, what can this unit do to help support you right now? Or, is there anyone who would like to talk more one-on-one? -on -one? With this group's permission, any suggestions or issues should be taken to leadership by the facilitator. One-to-one -one meetings with a chaplain or mental health professional who can assess risk and connect the service member to the appropriate resources should be the last activity of the day. These should be offered to anyone who needs or requests assistance, particularly those who have been identified as at risk or those who had a close association with the deceased. Proactively seeking one-to-one -one consultation should be talked about as a positive, healthy choice that is encouraged and supported. A loss to suicide is an opportunity to look at the unit culture around total fitness, especially mental health fitness. Command should think about what messages they send around mental health and what policies, protocols, and programs they have in place to support wellness. A good place to start is to make sure there is time and space allotted for mental fitness. You would not see a Marine, sailor, soldier, Coast Guardsman, or Airman thinking that they are burdening others when they are taking time for PT. This same attitude should be applied to mental fitness. At TAPS, we have found that resilience and active postvention supports post-traumatic growth in many ways, including a new appreciation for life, how you relate to others, new possibilities in life, and personal strength. Based on our research and years of observation, we can see that providing a post pension intervention in a proactive, intentional way, using our best practice TAPS post pension model, helps suicide loss survivors achieve growth following their traumatic loss. People in military units can find meaning after a suicide loss and can gain lessons learned which promote an increased resolve to get help for their mental pain just as they would for their physical pain. They can find ways to honor the life of their fallen brothers or sisters and become a more cohesive unit. After seeing this course, we hope you learned that one, suicide loss is a unique event that requires a specific response. Two, TAPS postvention model can be applied to help stabilize military units after a suicide loss. Three, safe messaging about suicide can decrease negative outcomes in military units. Four, good postvention can support a culture of mental health and wellness. And five, post-traumatic growth is possible after suicide loss. TAPS Institute for Hope and Healing offers a 60-minute deeper dive into topics related to our best practice postvention model. In addition, you can find information and resources such as the Department of Defense Suicide Postvention Toolkit at the Defense Suicide Prevention website in the list attached to this course. Thank you for taking the time for this course and for caring about our country service members, veterans, and their families.
The Veterans Crisis Line number is available 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Please call 1-800-273-8255 and then press 1 if you or someone you know is in crisis or just wants to talk. If you have any questions or need assistance, go to the Psych Armor website or call the Psych Armor support line at 844-779-2427. Thank you for completing this course and taking that one step further in learning about our American veterans.